Today we're going to talk about a collection of data that will be placed onto a frequency table that we create. The data that we collected today were, was from a survey of kids here at our school about the last video game they purchased and the price that it cost them. The information that we collected is shown in the data chart here on the board. As you can see, we've got four columns of, excuse me, four rows of information with one, two, three, four, five columns, which means we have four times five pieces of information or pieces of data. So that is a total of 20 pieces of data. This will be important to us a little bit later on. You'll see how we'll use that information. As you can see, the title of our information is Video Graph Prices, and all of, our, all of our prices are listed here. We did note that that is in dollars. Now we're ready to create our frequency table. Over to the side. Draw a little table, and we are going to title that table the exact same title as our data over here. We'll call it our video game prices. Again, we are showing this in dollars, so make sure you do label that correctly. The next step in creating your frequency, let's say this is our frequency table, would be to create three columns. We're going to title each of those columns. The first one will be our prices in dollars. The second one will be our tally marks. The third one will be our totals of our tally marks, and we call that our frequency. Hence the name frequency table. All right, looking back over at our data table, we are going to look at the lowest number on our, of our data to our highest. Our lowest looks like it's at 25. So our lowest, we're just going to make a note of that so we don't forget. Our highest piece of data, or the highest cost, was 100, a whopping 100. The reason we're making a note of the lowest and highest so we know what our scale will be under the price column on our frequency chart. We need to, to instead of listing every single piece of data down the price uh, column, we need to put intervals. And those intervals need to be exactly the same. So let's see. We could start with 0 to 25, or actually we're going to go 1 to 25 because that includes 25 different dollars. The next interval being the same number would be 26 through 50. Our next interval will be 51 to 70, 5. And then our last one will be 76 to 100. You want to make sure that you've included your lowest and your highest in your intervals. Now we're going to take that information here and go and we're going to tally any piece of data from our data table, make a mark every time we see it in our table. Do this in an organized fashion. Either you could go straight down your columns or straight across the rows. We're going to go straight across the rows and we're going to cross out every time we make a tally mark. In our interval from $1 to $25, 25 fits in there, tally mark. 29 does not, 25 here fits in. So cross it off so you don't count it by accident again. Next row, there's nothing that fits in 1 to 25. Next row, nothing. And the last row, nothing. So we have two pieces of data tallied in the 1 to 25 interval. The next interval is $26 to $50. Let's take a look in the same manner we did in the first. 60, 29 will fit in that interval. Let's mark it there as a tally mark. 40 fits in that interval. Down to the next row, 35. 
one, two, three. So we'll add three more tally marks. One, two, three. Notice the fifth tally mark, I'll put the traditional slash. Dropping down to our next interval. Oh, excuse me, we didn't finish, did we? 25 to 50. Yep, we've got some more here, folks. Don't make, you've got to make sure you count them all, don't you? Here and here. All right, I think we're finished with that interval. Go to the next. 51 to 75. 60 fits in that. 70 does. 55 and 70. That's two more. And 52 and 60. And our last interval, 76 to $100. 80 fits in there. Again, one, two, three, four, and we're done with our tally marks. Now, what you're going to do is take your tally marks and put the total of your tally marks in your frequency column. The next interval had five, six, seven, five, six, and five. Now, back over here, we said we had 20 pieces of data. I want you to check your work at this point. Stop and make sure you've counted everything. You should end up with 20 pieces of data in your frequency column, and that should match your 20 original pieces in your data box. 7, 8, 9, 15, and that is a total of 20. I always write that down just to verify that I have counted everything. So there you have it, folks, from data to frequency.